Japan's meteorological agency says there is no longer a threat of tsunami in northeast and eastern coastal areas. Officials had issued warnings and advisories following a powerful earthquake on Tuesday morning. Japan, the magnitude 7.4 quake occurred off Fukushima Prefecture around 6 in the morning local time. Japan's meteorological agency says waves up to 1.4 meters hit parts of the coast. It's the same region that was devastated by the 2000. 11 earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear accident. Many people had to evacuate to higher ground. I felt strong shaking, but it was weaker than the earthquake in 2011. I thought something terrible might happen, so I tried to escape to higher ground right away. Large furniture didn't fall over, but books and things did. I wasn't seriously hurt, but as I was evacuating, I pulled a muscle in my lower back. Local community centers were designated as shelters. In Fukushima alone, thousands of residents use the facilities. So far, there are no reports of major damage from the earthquake or the tsunami. But emergency response officials say at least 10 people have suffered minor injuries. More than 30 flights to and from Sendai International Airport were canceled. Airline companies say their operations are gradually returning to normal. Some local residents witnessed tsunami waves flowing upstream in the Tohoku region. A video posted to Twitter by a man shows a river in Iwaki City, Fukushima Prefecture, slowly flowing upstream due to the influence of tsunami waves. The man said he took the video from a bridge over the Bindagawa River just before 7 a.m. on Tuesday. He said he felt it was dangerous to remain there and quickly escaped from the riverside. The man said he felt scared as he witnessed such a scene for the first time. Another video uploaded by a local woman to YouTube shows tsunami waves moving upstream in Takajo City, Miyagi Prefecture. The woman took it at about 8 a.m. from her condominium. The video shows powerful waves splashing as they flow upstream. She said the waves began arriving 30 minutes before she started taking the video. The woman said numerous large waves moved upstream and she was very scared by the power of the water. Shortly before 9 a.m., a local police helicopter also filmed upstream waves in the Sunaoshi River in the city. The video shows waves moving upstream, but they didn't overflow the river. Video birds. of Sendai Station in Miyagi Prefecture during the quake. As you can see, our cameras are shaking. Video of Sendai Station in Miyagi Prefecture during the quake there. An official with the meteorological agency is calling on people in the affected areas to stay on the alert for another possible quake. There is possibility that a quake with the same strength could occur in a week or so. If a quake occurs off the coast again, it could also trigger tsunami.
Now, the Nuclear Regulation Authority says a cooling system for a spent nuclear fuel pool at the Fukushima Daini plant has resumed operation after briefly halting following the quake. Officials say there are no reports of abnormalities in other reactors at the plant. The regulator says as of 7.55 a.m., there are also no reports of irregularities at the Fukushima Daiichi plant, which was crippled by the 2011 quake and tsunami, nor at any other nuclear plant or facility in the area. And they say there are no changes to radiation levels at monitoring posts in the area. Government officials have visited the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant to see if engineers have successfully frozen soil around reactor buildings to block groundwater. Tons of such water seeps into the buildings and becomes contaminated every day. NHK World's Yuki Hidaka has more. State Minister for Industry Yosuke Takagi and other officials conducted the inspection on Monday. They got into a hall and checked the ground. Frost had formed on the surface of the frozen soil. The ground was hard enough to withstand a hammer blow. We were able to confirm that the soil is frozen. Three of the plant's reactors suffered meltdowns after it was hit by a tsunami in 2011. Groundwater flows downhill to the seaside. Right after the accident, about 400 tons of water entered the damaged reactor buildings every day. The plant's operator has built about 1,000 tanks to contain the accumulating contaminated water. It had to replace 300 of them after it found leaks from some of the tanks. Engineers have taken steps to regulate the contaminated water. They dug wells to pump up groundwater. They also installed a steel barrier to keep contaminated groundwater from flowing into the sea. And they are now building a frozen soil barrier. They are circulating coolant in varied pipes to form the 1.5 kilometer long wall. They hope to keep groundwater from entering the damaged buildings and being contaminated with radioactive substances. Engineers started freezing the soil in March. They say the barrier is almost complete. But some experts are skeptical about the project, which is said to cost taxpayers more than $300 million. Officials say the amount of groundwater they pump up each day on the lower side of the reactor buildings has decreased from 350 tons to 100. They say that shows the barrier is working. The government will do its best so that the wall is completed quickly. The president of a company charged with decommissioning the plant has this forecast. I think the work is steadily progressing. I'm hopeful that by February or by early next spring, we can show everyone that the ice wall is proving effective, even if the whole process is not completed. The plan for decommissioning the plant over decades calls for removing most of the contaminated water from the buildings in 2018. Yuki Hidaka. NHK Workers World. in Fukushima have started building an intermediate storage facility for contaminated soil and waste from the 2011 nuclear disaster. Groundbreaking ceremonies were held in the towns of Taba and Okuma on Tuesday. Two facilities will be built in a 16 square kilometer area that straddles the towns. One will be used to sort nuclear waste by size and level of contamination, and the other will store soil. I want each one of you to take pride in being a part of this essential work for regional revival. Workers began by removing contaminated soil from the surface of the site. Full-fledged construction work is to begin in January. Contaminated soil and waste had been kept at temporary sites throughout Fukushima Prefecture longer than the three years the government initially promised local communities. This was because construction of the intermediate storage site was delayed due to a lack of progress in acquiring the land. The Environment Ministry plans to begin operating the intermediate storage facilities in about a year. 
It plans to enlarge the site after acquiring a more A boy land. who was evacuated from Fukushima Prefecture after the 2011 nuclear disaster says he considered killing himself after he was bullied at his new school. A lawyer for the boy has released a note he wrote in July last year about what he went through at the primary school in Yokohama, south of Tokyo. The boy writes that while he thought of suicide, he decided to keep on living even if it was painful. He kept in mind how many people lost their lives in the earthquake and tsunami. The boy says he made the note public because he thought it would be meaningful if it could encourage other children. The boy is now in the first year of junior high school. His former classmates added the word germ to his name. He writes about how hurtful that was in the note. He says he knew the word referred to radiation from the nuclear accident, even though there was nothing wrong with his health, and that was why people from Fukushima were bullied. The boy describes how scared he felt, thinking that standing up to the bullies would only make things worse. Education authorities in Yokohama recognized earlier this month that the boy was bullied at the school. The family demanded an investigation last December, and the board looked into the matter. Yokohama Mayor Fumiko Hayashi says she instructed the board to tackle the issue properly. The incident was regrettable. I strongly think that the bullying was impermissible. The boy's parents said through the lawyer that their family was put under great stress. The parents criticized the school and the education board. They say they wish they could turn back the clock. The governor of the prefecture hosting the crippled nuclear plant says Japan's nuclear energy policy should be based on lessons learned from the 2011 disaster. Fukushima Governor Masao Uchibori was referring to an agreement to allow Japan to export nuclear power technology to India. On Friday, Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe concluded the deal with his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi. The pact limits the use of the technology to peaceful purposes. The two countries are to exchange information on materials and equipment. The deal is the first of its kind between Japan and a country that has not signed the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Uchibori said people in Fukushima still endure hardship more than five years after the disaster. It's important for us to tell the domestic and international community about the massive problems and challenges we face. Uchibori also stressed that he would call on the central government and the plant's operator to scrap all nuclear reactors in Fukushima. Japan's nuclear regulator has again given approval for an aging reactor to operate beyond a mandated 40-year limit. The regulator gave the green light for up to 20 more years of operation. The reactor is part of the Mihama nuclear power plant in central Japan. The regulator says the facility meets the required safety standards for the extension, but it pointed to a 2004 accident at the plant that killed five workers. They were killed when high-pressure steam leaked from a damaged pipe. The regulator has urged the Kansai Electric Power, the plant operator, to keep checking for facility decay. The reactor has been offline since 2011. Kansai Electric says it needs more additional safety work before it can go back online. It says that will be after March 2020. The head of the world governing body for baseball and softball has visited Fukushima Prefecture to inspect possible venues for the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. World Baseball Softball Confederation President Ricardo Fracari met Fukushima Governor Masao Uchibori on Saturday. Earlier this month, the 2020 organizing committee approved a plan to hold some baseball and softball games in Fukushima, which suffered a nuclear accident in 2011. The governor told Frakari that radiation levels in almost all areas of the prefecture have already lowered to the level common in major cities around the world. Uchibori expressed hope by using the Japanese word koryu, which means interaction. That Hori will be our keyword for the hosting baseball and softball matches here. Frakari then visited two sites in the cities of Fukushima and Koriyama. He indicated that the review of the sites will take into consideration security conditions, facilities for athletes, and schedules. 
The executive board of the International Olympic Committee will officially select venues in a meeting scheduled for early December. People in Fukushima are trying to dispel lingering and misleading impressions after the 2011 nuclear accident. One industry hit hard was sake brewing. Local makers are busy traveling overseas to regain trust and promote their products. Representatives from nine Fukushima breweries have been giving New Yorkers a taste of some of their finest sake brands. They offered their highly prized Jumai Dai Ginjo at a promotional event in the Big Apple. Hundreds of people enjoyed the drink. Owners of the restaurants, shops, and city officials showed up. I had no idea about the kind of uh, special and unique products like the ones I'm tasting today that, that are coming out of Fukushima. And so, uh, I mean, I think it's really important that they, they have this chance to uh, bring it to um, the New York market. Fukushima's sake exports have been floundering since the nuclear power plant accident. The shipments last year were worth about $1 million, a third of their peak. The competition is fierce, as many other brewers are exporting sake to the U.S. But the market is large, and I think we can ship more. I hope more people in the U.S. will enjoy sake from Fukushima.